Hey, what's up, Phil Ebener from Video School Online and the Photography Masterclass. So this is a photo editing challenge. If you're in the photo, photo Masterclass and in the Facebook group, we started doing monthly challenges. And I thought it would be fun for me to actually participate as well and to edit the photos myself to just to see what I would do. So this video is very raw. I haven't even looked or edited this photo myself. So this is gonna just be a complete from scratch, from, with a fresh start, what I would do if I got this photo and started editing it. So hopefully you enjoy these videos. I'll try to do them once a month with the photo editing challenge. The first thing I noticed was that the photo in the uh, post that I posted on Facebook, it actually had some hot air balloons in the background. And that was from an edit that I saw on We Saturate, where we downloaded this free photo from. So it just got me thinking, wow, well that was some sort of composite and that was pretty creative for that person to add those hot air balloons. Now, since the raw photo doesn't have the hot air balloons, then that's a decision. Do you wanna go in and try to be creative like that? I think that's good inspiration. But for me, I'm just going to do a basic edit just to, to, just to start, just to get things where I would what I would do if I started. So let's get straight into it. So normally I crop things first, but for now, since I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with this photo, I'm not going to crop it, but I am gonna rotate it just a little bit, just so that these lines are a little bit more vertical. So I'm gonna go into the crop button, and this is in Lightroom, I'm using Lightroom Classic. So you can edit this photo in any way, but I feel like if I rotate just slightly using this angle slider, just so these lines are more vertical, then it's gonna look a little bit more natural. Pressing enter to kind of lock in that crop. Now I'm gonna play with exposure. So I see some parts of this image in her hair are super, super duper overexposed. So I'm gonna bring back those whites. So as soon as I bring down those whites, you can start to see some of that information here in the hair. So if I zoom in there, you can kind of see there's still information in the hair and that's the beauty of shooting in raw. I'm gonna bring down some of the highlights as well, getting back even more of that information. Shadows, I'm gonna actually boost a little bit just to get some of those shadows back. I might go in with a brush and increase the shadows right here on her head. And then just to bring back some of that contrast, I am going to bring back down the blacks. Now I might make some fine tune adjustments with the tone curve, but I'm pretty happy there. In terms of the rest of these basic sliders, the white balance looks pretty good, but if I want to give it more of like a warm tone to it, I might just boost the warmth just a little bit. I tend to do that with a lot of my photos, make things a little bit warm, that's my style. Some people like to make things a little bit more cool and grungy. In terms of vibrance, I do like all the colors in here. I think I'm gonna skip the vibrance and saturation sliders here and I'm going to go down to the HSL sliders down below and more pinpoint the colors that I want to boost. I'm skipping the tone curve for now because I'd like to leave that for the end, just if I wanna make any last final adjustments for the, the contrast and the exposure. So let's go down to the hue saturation sliders. So I'm gonna go down into saturation and just click this little button right there and now I can go over to the photo pick a color in the photo and really boost that. Now, if I go too far, it starts to get a little unnatural, but you can see the color in the sky is the blue and a little bit of the aqua. I am just gonna boost that. The red here as well, I'm gonna go here, boost those reds. And let's see, the yellow, do I like the yellow? This is one thing that I feel like is a little bit distracting from her. So I'm actually gonna decrease the yellows a little bit. Now, if I decrease the yellow too much, you see that I start to lose some of the color in her skin. So I don't wanna do it too much. I'm just gonna go to the yellow slider here instead of the orange, getting the orange as well by picking the spot on the photo, just like so. Cool, so that's looking pretty good in terms of the colors. I'm happy with that. Split toning, I'm gonna leave, I'm not really, uh, particular with uh, doing split toning right now. All right, so now I'm gonna zoom in and just see how sharp this image is. It looks like it's in focus, which is good. And Lightroom automatically adds some sharpening to it. Uh, in terms of noise, this was shot during the day. It looks like the ISO wasn't too high. So it looks pretty good. 
Now I am seeing a little bit of chromatic aberration on the edges of some of these bars and things. So I am going to tick on that remove chromatic aberration box. Let's see if I go into the manual settings. I see that I still have some of these this fringing happening with uh, the, the purple and the green. So here, if I increase this slider, the defringe slider under the manual lens corrections, that gets rid of that magenta. See how that look right here? If I increase that slider, it gets rid of it. Now I still have some of that green, which the automatic remove chromatic aberration didn't work on. So I'm gonna increase this slider and maybe increase the range of this green hue. Give it a little bit more blue. There we go, that's working. And I'm also gonna increase this purple hue just cause I see a little bit over here. So that really cleans up the edges of this image, which I think is, is pretty cool. Awesome, so let's see the upright. I'm not gonna use the upright tool or the transform tool. I think it's fine how it is. Vignette, this is something I might play with. Adding a little bit of a vignette is nice for this image because you really want the eye to be focused on the subject that's in the center of the frame. I'm not really using the rule of thirds here. She's right in the center. But when I add a vignette, I am going to definitely increase the feathering, decrease that midpoint so it's really a big vignette so if I turn this on and off you can see what it does it does draw that attention it also brings a little bit more contrast back into the edges which I like all right so this is a basic edit that I've done so far next thing I would do is go in here and just edit a bit of it with the adjustment brush so if I take this adjustment brush let me just clear everything out double clicking effect and now let's increase the brush size and we're just going to make sure we have our mask overlay on and just brush over her face right here so for now that's all I want to actually get and I'm gonna bring up those shadows just a little bit but also bring down the blacks just a little bit just to bring a little bit of contrast but I do want to not have that shadow be as dramatic. Now notice if I just brought up the exposure of everything, that can start to look a little bit washed out, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, especially when you're using a brush on a person's face, be careful with these sliders. You wanna make sure that uh, it's not looking too unnatural. Usually, usually bringing up the shadows is fine. Bringing up the blacks is definitely gonna make it look pretty faded, and unless that's the style you want, I think uh, being careful and not doing that is, is the best thing. Cool, that's pretty good. I'm gonna click new and now brush over her hair down here because I think her hair uh, could use a little bit more um, decrease, actually a decrease in, in exposure. So I've painted over her hair like so. Now I'm gonna take my white slider even more, maybe highlights just a little bit. Yeah, the highlights seem to pick that up even better. Maybe just boost the contrast just a little bit right there, just to get a little pop in that hair. Cool, nice. All right, so let's zoom out. And we're gonna click done. Cool, that's looking pretty good. So if I press the backsplash button on my, my keyboard, I can see the before and after. So this is a basic edit. Now I'm trying to think if I would do anything creative. Now. I, I do notice that this yellow is still distracting to me a little bit. Instead of bringing down the yellow um, overall, what I'm going to do is let's use a gradient mask. We're gonna add one right here just so we get the yellow over here. So it's selecting this bottom part right here. Now we're going to desaturate just a little bit. Now it doesn't look too unnatural because we're not losing much saturation on a person's face or something like that. And usually um, if it's something ju that's just in the background like this, it looks better. So I, I like that actually better just because I want the focus to be on her. I could do something really creative uh, that I was just thinking and really just have her be saturated and everything else desaturated. Uh, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like so. All right, the last thing I'm going to do after looking that, at this photo for a second is really just trying to make the sky pop a little. So 
What I'm going to do is use another graduated filter. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to go about here, move it down. So we're selecting everything above this handrail, but I want to make sure that I'm not selecting her as much as possible. So with this graduated filter, I'm going to turn on my range mask for color. With my color picker, I can just go up here to the sky, click and drag a little box so it's selecting those colors, that blue, and then I can fine tune it with this sort of amount slider down here, and that's looking good. Click over here back on this color picker to stop using it. Now, I do wanna make sure I'm not selecting her face at all, so I'm gonna take my brush and go to erase, and I'm just gonna erase over her face to make sure absolutely nothing in her skin or on her face is being selected or even in her leg up here because uh, once you start doing some pretty intense editing with this graduated filter, it's gonna start looking pretty awkward if her face is also being edited. Next, I'm going to, let's turn off our show selected mask overlay. Now I really see how I can boost this. I think one thing just to play with the colors, I'm gonna move the tint and slide it up, add a lot of magenta, and then also move my blue slider down. So we're really getting a, more of a rich dark blue. Now let's try to make it even more dark or a little bit punchier. And with our exposure slider, let's move that down. Now, if I move this down all the way, we can actually start to make this look more like some sort of night sky. Now this would take a little bit more editing. Uh, maybe we'd have to make sure that we're getting the entire night sky, edit some of the light coming over from the left hand side, but it's possible. It's possible to get something pretty cool like that. Now saturation, we're already pretty saturated, so I'm not gonna play with that. Uh, Dehaze sometimes help with, helps with skies a little bit. Um, now, as I keep doing this, it starts to get way too over edited. So I might do a couple things like if I add some dehaze, I'll back off on the exposure adjustment that I was just doing. Does that make sense? And so you gotta be careful if you keep adding and adding and adding these things. Another thing we can do is color. We can add some color to this. Say we want to make it more purple. Pretty cool, more red or something like that. This is just getting more creative. Now, I think maybe for me, just adding a little bit of purple or red, boosting that saturation, just makes it a little bit more of a creative edit. Now I'm not sure what I wanna do <laughs> after you looking at that. I think actually making it more like a, a teal that we're adding, adding by adding some green. I kind of like that a little bit more because then it makes her clothes and everything pop out just a little bit more. Clarity, that's not really gonna do anything because there's not much in the sky. Lastly, just go back to this exposure slider. Yeah, that's something like that's looking pretty good. Cool, so now if we look at the before and after, you can see a dramatic change from the before lots of overexposed parts of this image. The color is not as poppy. And here we see this final, well, for me, my final image. Now, the last thing I am gonna go back and do is see if I wanna crop. I might crop in just a little bit so that it's a little bit more balanced so that her legs kinda go through the entire photo and there's not as much negative space at the top. For me, for this photo, I just think that'll look a little bit better. Cool. Now, now that I'm looking at this, there's one thing that's bugging me a little bit and that's this little tower here in the left-hand side. So I'm gonna go to my healing brush and I'm gonna see if I can remove that, that tower. So I'm gonna increase the size of my brush, just brush over this like so and see what it does. We're gonna move this down me over here where the sky's a little bit lighter, so it's pulling colors from this over on the right-hand side. Let's decrease our feather just a little bit. So that's a little bit harder edge on the bottom. Paint it on a little bit more, so now let's move this over here.
Mm, looks a little awkward now, so I gotta finesse this just a little bit. Okay, that's looking better now that I got rid of that bottom part. Now, one thing I can do to improve this even more, because you can see the edge of this, is just add some blur to it. So I'm gonna take a new adjustment brush and I'm just gonna paint over this area right here. So you can see this whole area and then just decrease the sharpness and also decrease the clarity. So now all this is kind of um, being blurred just a little bit more. So now if we zoom back out it's a bit hard to tell. So, I mean, I can see it right now. I might go in there and fine tune it even more if I wanted to spend more time on this. But if you're seeing this photo for the first time, you're probably not going to notice that any sort of kind of uh, change right there. And it, it doesn't look too edited. Uh, again, I would probably go in here and fine tune it a little bit. But now that tower to me is not distracting from her as the subject in the center of the frame. And now the horizon level right here that's in the middle of the shot is more straight across without any things up and down. Not that that's a bad thing, but in this image, I, I think so. Okay, right, last, last thing I'm gonna do is go to the tone curve, just see what happens if I add a little bit more contrast. I'm just gonna actually bring down the curve completely just so that the exposure is a little bit darker. Now, if I want some sort of faded look, I could bring up the blacks or the mids, just like that. All right, so we got the before and after. Let's see the before and after here. Cool. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this helps give you some ideas for editing this photo. If again, if you aren't in the photography masterclass, please go ahead and join it. I'll include a link below if you're watching this on YouTube and you can join the class. It's really great. We have a Facebook group dedicated to the students in the group with at this point uh, over 13,000 members. People are posting great inspirational photos, asking questions, and it's a great way to get feedback on your photography and just improve yourself as a photographer. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in another video.